We can even go two days without last call. We're back after the season finale for a special episode here this Wednesday afternoon. I'm Caden Colford, joined by Jace Hodge and Jake Helton. We're hopping right into the NBA playoffs, which are in full swing, and we are seeing great game after great game after great game. First game on the slate is going to be the Cavs versus the Magic. Last night, the Cavs won 96, 86, and frankly, guys, the Magic have zero zero sources of offense. I mean, uh, Ben Carroll, I mean, he's a great player. They brought him in. He's a he's a guy that you can build a team around. And uh, But it, right now, this Magic team, like you said, they have no alternative source of offense, if you want to even consider that a source of offense. Uh, being the star player and only putting up 21 points, that's a little bit, uh, well, bad in my opinion. But if you're Paulo Ben Carroll, you got to be looking ahead at the future. Unfortunately, this series, you're down 2-0. I personally don't see them picking up a game here. I think this is a clean sweep for the Cavs. It's not even that they're that much better than the, the Magic. It's just the Magic aren't that good. They made it in into the playoffs, obviously, solid team. I think they're five seed. But coming in, it, they, it just looks like they weren't ready to play in the playoffs. And I think the, the scores of offense for Orlando is because of their defense. They mm -hmm. are probably the best defensive team in the NBA this season and it usually leads to transition, you know, steals lead to easy layups, to dunks. That gets them, you know, those points. But when Cleveland is the perfect matchup for them, perfect, honestly, because Bancaro obviously is their big, their main scorer, but then you have Jared Allen, Evan Mobley down low, just preventing any easy buckets down there. Well, for Orlando, you had Paolo with 21, Franz Wagner had 18, Gary Harris had 14, and then you look over at Cleveland and their weapons like Donovan Mitchell. Jared Allen had 16. Evan Mobley was up there with 17 points as well. And that's one thing I want to bring up as well. Where do you think these Cavs bigs rank in the league? That's an interesting thing. I think that's been one of the, the bigger debates, especially at the beginning of the season. You got someone like Chet coming in, playing his first season. Obviously, Wimby coming in. In, in my opinion, it was a, a question of who's going to have the best big this year. I think throughout the season it turned out to, to who's going to play better defense in the playoffs at this point. It, it's not going to be an offensive battle for any team, I don't feel. But the Cavs, they got Evan Mobley. He's got size. He's got defense. He was very good at um, uh, Iowa State, was it? I think it was USC. Was or, it might have been USC. You're right. Same and colors. Yeah, same yeah, color. Yeah. I, I knew it I was that crimson red. Right but, um, there, he was one of the best defensive players in all of college basketball, and I think that's still something that we see here. And then Jared Allen, he might have one of the best highlight block reels ever. Like, he has blocked just about every big name that you can think of. I mean, he's even blocked LeBron. Like, it's, it's Probably one of the most underrated bigs in the league. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. It's the perfect duo of bigs for the Cavaliers mm -hmm. with Allen and Mobley. They complement they complement each other so, so well. And then you combine that with the offensive prowess of Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland. It's just the perfect combination of players. And the other thing, you got to have a mobile big on Evan Mobley because he can shoot, he can dribble, he can drive. He's not just your down low big playing He's defense. He's that modern big he, guy. He is. He's kind of more of that Wimby era uh, big. He's got the, the shot. He's got the handles. And I think if they develop him, kind of give him the Giannis treatment, get some muscle on him, he could, he could be pretty good. Darius Garland, Donovan Mitchell, they'll look to do their thing, heading to Orlando for game three. Next on the slate, you're going to have the Knicks versus the 76ers, and some might say the 76ers mm. got robbed mm. in this one, but the final score would end up being 104-101 Knicks in the Garden. And as we look through these highlights here, you're going to see a lot of Tyrese Maxey, a lot of Joel Embiid, but how about Josh Hart with 21 and 15? I talked about him on Monday. This guy is proving to be one of the most valuable players on the court when he's on there. He actually is, and it's not someone that you look at this team and say he's going to be the star player of this team, but he played 48 minutes last night. He also managed to grab 15 rebounds as a point guard. Look at this guy pulling up in transition like he's Jalen Brunson. He's distributing. Dante DiVincenzo is putting in work. I mean, he hit the, the game go-ahead three at the end of the game. I think that the, the Knicks, while I personally don't believe they should have won that game, Came down to the end. That was a foul. It should have not happened as it did. But I think the Knicks played a 
pretty perfect game. I mean, I don't know that they're going to play much better basketball than what we saw right here. And then, I mean, people don't understand how valuable Hart has been to the squad all year long because he kind of goes under the radar with the Brunson 40 points a night sometimes. But he's pulling down board after board after board, and that leads to both second chance opportunities and transition buckets when he gets those boards and just, you know, outlets up the court. But then you have Brunson, the go-to scorer. I mean, he only had 24 points, but that's good enough to get you the win in this one. Obviously, Jack, I agree with you that Philly should have won that game. The referee's kind of messed up, you know. A few they calls there the, at the end. The final two-minute report? Yeah, 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 the, the, the LT, L2M, I think they call it, the last two-minute report. They didn't think there was a few that they missed. When Max got the ball in the inbound, he got fouled. They didn't call that. It led to a steal and the go-ahead three. I mean, it's a tough way to lose. It definitely is, especially when you almost have a triple-double. I mean, yeah. Maxie was one rebound off a triple-double, and he's an electric player. I mean, I got to watch him at Kentucky, and, I mean, he's just – fun to watch play. I mean, he's not pulling up for half court threes every other shot. Mm -hmm. he, he works for his buckets. He's going to hit you with some good dribble moves, get to the bucket. He's either dumping that to the big on the block or he's going up for that lay. So and To me, he was deservedly named also the most improved player yesterday as well. Definitely. So, I mean, he's a phenomenal player. He's a great point guard. He's going to be a great point guard for Philadelphia for years to come because that combo of him and Embiid works perfectly. That's exactly what I was looking at next. If you look at those stats, how similar they are, 35 and 34 points, that's what you need. You don't need yep. 70 points out of Embiid because that gets no one else involved. And I think well, we'll get to it later with the Pacers, but uh, defense is going to be who wins this game. If the Knicks can continue to guard Joel Embiid, continue I mean they have to limit Tyrese Maxey yeah. that cannot happen if he's scoring 30 points they're probably not going to win last question here for you Jace are you concerned at all with any lack of depth on the Sixers a little bit but I mean I mean you have Buddy Heald you know they, they, that they traded a few second round picks for at the, at the deadline and he's just not doing anything he can't shoot the ball for the life of him he's getting the minutes but he just can't shoot yeah. Which, is, which is a problem that we noticed here in Indiana as well. Especially this year. Yeah. And, then, and then you have Kyle Lowry, who is doing his thing, but he's obviously regressing. He's a veteran now. But Toom, same thing, veteran. I mean, you have, you have that veteran leadership, but you don't have like a young guy off the bench that can really, you know, power forward the bench unit. The difference maker for the Sixers is going to be Kelly Oubre. That, really? that's, that's my take. I, if I can he can get in and be the role player that gets them those extra points, he only had four points. He has ten. They win this game by five plus. I mean, it's... That, that, in my opinion, is going to be the big difference. He was in for 26 minutes, no numbers to show for it, only four points. I think that that's going to be the big difference. Yeah, because you have, the, you have the two main people in, in Bede and Maxi, but after that, it's just a big drop-off. Exactly. If you're going to have score. third, fourth, maybe even the fifth best player, defensive player on the court guarding you, you've got to be able to put up numbers. If yeah. you're going to make it to the NBA, you've got to be able to get a bucket. I don't see how the 76ers can defend the Knicks, but... With a 2-0 lead in the series, Knicks will head to Philly as they look to climb back into the series. Next up, Lakers and the Nuggets. And the Lakers looked like they were going to run away with this one. They were up by 20 at one point in Denver. D'Lo had a great first half. He was varying everything from long range. But this is Denver we're talking about, guys. This is Denver. Nikola Jokic on the night. He had 27, 20, and 10 we know the MVP is a regular season award, but man, this guy, every night, it's something new. And the thing that, in my opinion, it's not necessarily a thing I don't like about the Nuggets, but as a fan of Jamal Murray, he gets overshadowed uh, by Nikola Jokic. He would be, for sure, the best player on almost any other team. And that game-winning shot, I mean, that is arguably one of the greatest defensive players in Anthony Davis. He's one of definitely top five best defensive players to ever play. And that was a phenomenal move. Hit him with a step back, created the perfect amount of space, and obviously you saw the shot go in. This, this Nuggets offense has just reached another level at this point. I, I find it very hard to compete with a team that can panic, get down with one second in the shot clock and still get a good shot off just about every time. You hardly ever see the Nuggets taking bad shots, unless they're coming from Michael Porter Jr. <laughs> Jace, LeBron at 39 years yep. old, can he lead a team to another playoff series win? I mean, it's possible, but not like it's Denver. I mean, okay. this, is, this is the Nuggets we're talking about. This is the best team in the NBA we're talking about, in my opinion. I mean, the Nuggets just play possibly one of the worst games I've seen them play this season, and they still won because they're Denver. 
I mean, they were down by, what, 20 points, like you said? Mm -hmm. they, were, they were down and out. They fought back once again. I mean, the Lakers, they were still hitting shots to answer them, but the Nuggets had an answer every single time, whether it was Jokic, whether it was Murray, or whether it was Porter. He had 22 points in the night. And I would say, while the Nuggets had one of their worst games, the Lakers probably had one of their best. Yeah. LeBron with 26, AD with 32, D'Lo in the 20s as well. They did and those are three guys to. that you need to play well. They did play well. Yeah. And... Even with those performances, you're not getting the outcome that you want. I'm calling on Austin Reeves, just anybody, anybody at all on the bench to do something for the Lakers. That's the thing. You see three big numbers on this stat sheet, and then it's a bunch of zeros, a three. You played 38 minutes and scored three points? Come on. Come on. The, uh, it's like Anthony Davis, he's a great defensive player. He's going to get it done on the offensive end. He can almost guarantee you a double-double every game as long as he's healthy. LeBron, obviously one of the best players, if not, I mean, he's in there in the GOAT debate. You have two of the potential best players in their field on your team. There should be a game plan to where you can figure out how to guard Nikola Jokic. He is not unguardable. They've obviously lost uh, 10, 15 games this he year. He might be unguardable, Jake. He, <laughs> might, he might be. He might be. I've seen perfect defense. As much defense. as you we would love to say that, there is always a way to guard someone, and that is what the Lakers are going to have to Tell that to Darvin Ham. Tell that to 30 <laughs> NBA coaches. But we'll look for a cure, if you will, for Nikola Jokic, just the same as Darvin Ham, and move on to our next game. The Slate Nuggets up 2-0 well in that series. Move to Suns versus Timberwolves. Well, how about the T-Wolves with a 2-0 lead over Phoenix? I'm gonna ask you guys, why aren't the stars shining for the Suns? That's a tough question for me to answer personally. I didn't get a chance to watch this game last night, so I don't know what it was, but from the reports I read, Kevin Durant's getting locked up, and it all starts yes. offensively for the Suns with Kevin Durant. If Kevin Durant's not scoring, it's gonna be very, very hard for other people to score. I mean. 41 minutes, 18 points, you might look at that, that's an average stat line right there. That's not a KD stat line in my opinion. Devin Booker, you need a little bit more out of him, but the Timberwolves. How about this guy right here? Jaden McDaniels. You got that's Kevin Durant, true. we got Jaden McDaniels. Jace, I mean, the Timberwolves just look, they look deep. They, they, they look like a team they that are. could go deep to the playoffs as well. I mean, they have the depth. Like you said, they're very, a very deep team. They're like the Orlando Magic, but with offense. Because they have there Anthony, because, because they have Anthony Edwards on the on the basketball Look team. Look at it! And sending these shots back as a shooting this guard. This right here, the the fan called for the one on one and gave it to him. <laughs> this clip's been all over Instagram, and this is just a fun team to watch. Like I'm, I've been enjoying this finals so far. I mean, it's been a lot of offense, but it's not just been offense. We're not having 130 point games. They've all been in the 90s, low 100s. It's been very competitive games so far. Chase, do you see the Suns bouncing back? I do not. Not with the Timberwolves defense because they're locking up Kevin Durant. They're locking up Devin Booker. I mean, they're locking up three superstars on the side of the Suns, and they have no answer for it right now. And the T-Wolves, that defense is just going to lead them through the series because they have the defense, they have the offense. That's going to easily beat the Suns, in my opinion. We're seeing LeBron James down 0-2. We're seeing Kevin Durant down 0-2. Steph Curry yeah. the tides didn't changed. even make the playoffs. We're in a new era of the NBA. Yeah. And I know we're kind of hopping off schedule with that question, but what do you guys make of the new look National Basketball Association? I kind of like it, honestly. Yeah. It's turning into one of those things where you're not just watching the Lakers or the Warriors because they have LeBron and Steph Curry. You're watching these teams because you like, or not, not for everybody, but me personally, I like team basketball, and that's what we're seeing right here. You're not seeing one guy with 60, 50 points. It's a lot of good basketball. When Jaden McDaniels is playing 41 minutes, yeah. That they're they're going to have good results. I mean, he is, he's shown, I don't know if he's channeling his inner playoff Damian Lillard or what is going on, but he is proving that, I mean, he's proving exactly what Anthony Edwards said. We have Jaden McDaniels, and that's exactly what they have. And this has been one of the years that we genuinely don't know who's going to win half of these series. Usually, you know, it's the higher seed that goes out 4-1, 4-0, but this year we just don't know. I mean, any of these series could go any way, maybe outside the Boston Celtics series, but anyone can win anything. I mean, you look at the Sixers, they could have easily won that game too and gone all and won the series. The Lakers, they could still come back, it's possible, but it's very doubtful. And then the, you, see, you see the Pelicans against the Thunder, they're in that series. I mean, they're down 1-0 so far, mm -hmm. but they can easily grab a game, a game two here tonight. Moving on to an indie squad, and the Pacers took on the Bucks to even it up. 
one and one. You take one in Milwaukee, which is huge, huge as well. Jace, yes. I know that yep. you, were wa you watched every oh, second I did. of this you game. You know I did. But even as Danny continues his onslaught on the Pacers, Pascal Siakam, Miles Turner, they're putting in work. And as Siakam goes to work here, Jace, I ask you, is he the guy on this Pacers he is. squad now? He needs to be the guy. I've been saying that he needs to be the number one option on this squad. Halliburton needs to sit back and be more of a, a facilitator during the game. Siakam needs to be that go-to scorer. They did that this game at work. They showed more heart in this game. They showed you know, more aggressiveness in this game, driving to the basket and then kicking it out for threes. And for once, Turner actually was knocking down some shots, which was nice to see. For once. Which was nice to see. I mean, obviously, Dame is going to go get his you know, 30 points a game without, without Giannis on the court. Mm -hmm. But that was the entire game plan for Indiana. Have Dame do his thing. Don't let anyone else do anything. Although, Brooke Lopez decided to be Steph Curry last night for some <laughs> odd reason. Yeah, 22 for Lopez. And it was almost back. off all off threes. He was just pulling up from almost a logo and knocking him down for some odd reason. Something big I would like to note, Chris Middleton went down in the middle of that game. He did. He came back, though. He came back. And he did come he back. Came, okay. Came back. So that'll be something to keep an eye on. But this is what the Pacers have to do. All yes. year they have been outscoring teams offensively. You said it last time. They got in these close games. They were able to win in the regular season. you got to be able to move that to the postseason. Right here, they just did away with that. Winning by 20 points almost. You don't even have to worry I mean, about it. In Milwaukee, game. too, bouncing back off of that huge loss on Sunday. I mean, that was almost a demoralizing loss, the way they lost that game. Almost. And, Damian and Lillard, so the bounce back is something. I mean, he pretty much, once again, dominated the first half. Pacers come out in the second half, own it. I think that if they were able to limit him even more, I mean, I think that there's a way. I mean, Dame, you said it. He's going to go out and get his points. But I think there is a person on this Indiana squad yep. that can You're gonna guard him. It. I think I'm going to have to go with uh, someone by the name of Andrew Nimhard. Yep, Andrew Nimhard. This guy played the best game I've seen him play all season long. 24 and 5 for Nimhard. I, I mean, mean, he played great offensive basketball. He was face guarding Dame in the second half, and it was working. Nimhard outplayed Damian Lillard in the playoffs in the second half. I, I think that's the difference <laughs> in this game. The Pacers realized at, the, at halftime they got to shut down Dame, but it was already kind of too far gone. They were down by 20, 30 points at halftime. This one, close game at halftime, you shut down Dame for the entire second mm -hmm. half. Where's their offense coming from? Brooke Lopez, as wow. you said, they tried it. Threes, they, they, they tried it. <laughs> it's not going to be enough. Andrew Nemhard, the defender that the Pacers needed. Now that is a storyline. With the series at one and one, you'll come back to Indianapolis later this week. And hey, maybe the Pacers take a series lead against Who knows? the Bucks. Who knows? Mavs and Clippers on the slate next for us. Another series at one and one. Kawhi's return to the playoffs. And Jake, he made a point about this on Monday with Kawhi back into the lineup. How the Clippers do? Not as well. They could not find the bottom of the bucket for anything. And obviously, I, I think that this is something that you see with every team. When they bring in a player that hasn't played with them for a long time, it throws off the chemistry. They've had to, for the past two months, build around not having Kawhi Leonard, which forces other people to score, makes other people play more minutes, lets people get used to playing more minutes. So you might think, I got more time to go out and score, but you're on the bench in three or four minutes sitting back down. Kawhi had 15 points. That's not finals MVP caliber Kawhi. He hasn't practiced with him yet. I think if they're able to make it out of this series, that's when you start seeing the effects of Kawhi coming back. I think one thing to note here, I mean, you're sitting at 93-88 right now, but it was a battle through the final three minutes and crunch time. In those final two minutes, which roster would you rather have, Jace? Honestly, Luka, just by himself. Wow. I mean, you see, you see that shot he hit, you know, the step back three mm -hmm. really closed the game out. Yeah, he really did. Luka is clutch. I mean, plain and simple, Luka is one of the most clutch players in the NBA. And he's clutch in the playoffs. Too. Yeah. I remember going back to the bubble where he, yeah. he oh, yeah. did Patrick Beverly step back at the logo to game it. Now, yeah. And see, what I said on Monday is that the Mavericks need a, a third source of offense. They kind of have one in this game in P.J. Washington. He had 18 points in this one, you know, paint presence, which is nice to have for Dallas when they have Luka and Kyrie doing their thing from three and mid-range. And if you read through these recaps that M the NBA website posts, you're going to see P.J. Washington in almost every other paragraph. I think that okay. he is kind of the difference maker in this game in the same way that we pointed out some of the other ones. I think that if he's able to create offense like this, 18 around that range, he's able to I, – I don't like no assists coming from him. He is a forward, but yeah. he gets the ball down in the, the high post. He should be able to dish out, especially with all these weapons around him. And – I mean, this is a team, 
I'm with you. I'm taking Luca by himself. Yeah. The the most clutch player, in my opinion, in the league right now. I don't. And then you got Kyrie, who Shea, you Shea could maybe. say was arguably the player right before him who was the most uh, clutch in those moments. We've seen him in the the finals against the the Warriors hit a plethora of yep. clutch shots. So I think that. If it's going to come down to games like this, Dallas has the advantage yeah. in the close one. If you're L.A., you don't want to be in a close game with Dallas because Luka's going to hit these shots. Kyrie's going to do his thing with his handles. Guys. I'm telling you, Dallas, Dallas if it's a close game, Dallas is winning these games. Guys, I think you we... forgot who he picked, Jace. No. Huh? I think you forgot. We, we, who he we're picked. not remembering what Kawhi Leonard looks like in the playoffs when this guy's healthy. Well, you just he's, said not, it. Well, he's not healthy. That's the thing. He's not healthy right now. That's well, the thing. Well, Jake just said it. He hasn't practiced with the team. Yeah. He has not practiced with the team. So you give him a week, give him a couple days of practice, let him get back to the swing of things. I'm telling you, the Clippers have yeah. one too many superstars. I don't one think that's many. a thing. I don't I, think I, that's I, a I think, thing. I think it is a thing. You see it with Phoenix as well. I well, think, it's because Phoenix has no bench. Well, here, here's, my thing, here's my thing with why I think bringing him back was the, the, be, the worst thing that could have happened in this series. You have Zubak come out and play the best game he's probably ever played. I, I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb and say he's probably not had many games better than that one. And then you bring it in, his numbers go down. That is purely because of less shots. Mm -hmm. He had 13 points. I'm sure he was six for seven, somewhere around that range, just those little, that yeah. right hand dump. But like he said, that's four people that need the ball, that can shoot the ball every time we go, or they go down the court. And so when you have, sometimes there is a, a, a thing, you can have too many options. And right here, I think in this series, just in this series, if Kawhi would not have came back, I think the, the Clippers would have had the advantage. Listen, also, I was highly unimpressed by Harden in this game. He was missing three after three after two three. Two for ten. He, 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 could, he, could, he couldn't get it going. Obviously, he's not going to have many, many nights like that. So as long as he has it going, I, I believe the Clippers will win this series. Mm -hmm. But if the games are close, I trust Dallas more in those close moments. All right. So as we wrap up the slate, we have a question on deck coming from the studio saying, what's would be the most exciting NBA Finals matchup. The most exciting. Most exciting. And the Timberwolves have to be in this. The yeah. Timberwolves have to be yeah. in this for me. And I'm just thinking, Maybe. who in know. the East? Boston. It has to be Boston. Timberwolves in Boston. You're talking Ant Edwards, the second coming of Michael Jordan, alongside two bigs and Cat, uh, Rudy Gobert, who just had, who's coming off a great game. Jaden McDaniels, who might be in MVP conversation next year, apparently <laughs> playing like this in the playoffs. Right, but then you're playing Boston, who is basically the Avengers. Oh, so I'm looking difficult. for Timberwolves, Boston. Jake, you've got one. I'm still thinking. Um, I think that that would be interesting, but I still think that I would love to see my finals prediction: the Boston versus the Nuggets. I mean, I, I don't think it gets. I think that's peak basketball right there. That is quite possibly one of the best offenses that is ever to play against one of the best offensive players ever. I mean, and I'll say this, they're two of the best made rosters yeah. that we've ever seen. Like from top to bottom, first five to five off the bench. I mean, round of applause to these GMs. They've done a great job building the programs and our programs talking like it's <laughs> like it's you in <laughs> building their franchises. <laughs> And I think that'd be exciting as well. Jace, what are you if thinking? If we're talking like the best matchup that I would want to see, I agree with you with Timberwolves and Celtics, but if we're talking like storyline-wise and how the games would go, I think it'd be Timberwolves Pacers, honestly. The best defense okay. is the best offense. I had a feeling his final was going to have the Pacers and it just <laughs> it just. Well, listen, I was also a little bit of bias in that, but it's true because <laughs> it's the best defense in Minnesota who also has an electric offense at times versus the literal best offense we've seen in 50 years. Yeah. Pretty good analysis right there. It doesn't get much better said than that. Hey, sounds good to me. So I had Timberwolves Celtics, Denver Celtics, Denver Celtics. and you had Timberwolves Pacers. Sounds sure. like three nice possibilities. Indians make. not going to be there, but I wish they would. <laughs> We're going to come back with a couple more pickums this week on the slate. We'll let you know. Emma Donnan, elementary and middle school. Discover the Donnan difference. A school where you can celebrate others, come together as a community, be a part of a learning environment where students and teachers are appreciated. In the dawn, a culture that can't be beat, that's going onward together. A school filled with love. In the dawn. I love my school. <laughs> Hey! 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 
Donnan, elementary and middle school. Discover the Donnan difference. A school where you can celebrate others. Come together as a community. Be a part of a learning environment where students and teachers are appreciated. In the Donnan, a culture that can't be beat that's going onward together. A school filled with love. In the Donnan. I love my school. How about those nuggets this year, Jace? It sounds like a chip to me. They ain't going back to back. Ain't no one getting past Boston. They got a super team, man. All right, Jace, check up. This is the last call. Jace and I head to head on football, baseball, basketball, and everything UND. Mondays, 6 p.m. in UND TV on YouTube and Xfinity Stream Channel 1096. So the overall mission here at Palano House Indy is to help with the development and growth, the self-efficiency and self-sufficiency of the near northwest side of Indianapolis. When the double eights closed in the area that left the near northwest side a food desert. So Brandon Cosby, the executive director of Planner House, started with the Planner House Farms where they grow fresh produce organically for the neighborhood around. And then later on down the line, Cleo's came about. So we're here to help with the sustainability of getting fresh food at cheap prices to the locals around. Black owned, black ran. That's the gist of Cleo's for the most part. We're back on last call. Usually this would be our prime time pick em segment, but we have four eighth graders with us today. And Naima, Labiba, Juan, and Maven. So first, we'll start with Maven on the far end. Tell us what you want to do and how's school going? Ooh, I would like to be a lawyer when I grow up. And school is going good. We're reaching the end. It's getting a little tiring, but I think we can make it. Okay, okay. So. We'll move, we'll move just down the line, and I'll ask you about Mr. Pagel. How's Mr. Pagel doing as your teacher and your best memory with him so far? Um, he's a really cool teacher, you know? I yeah. like him. He's one of the best teachers. He's cool. One of the best. Mm -hmm. What makes him one of the best? Um, you know, he's not like all mean or old. You know? Not mean he's or old. Hey, that's, <laughs> that's pretty good. So with Labiba now, what do you want to do? What is your desire, your career desire to do in life? Um, so I either want to be a pediatrician or a neurosurgeon. So, yeah. And how's school going right now? School's fine. School's fine. What would make it great? Leaving. <laughs> that makes sense. I felt the exact same way just a couple of years ago. And then finally, Juan, I'll ask you, what do you want to do with your life now? When I grow up, I want to be a teacher. I've always been interested in like education, whatever. Uh, and right now, school's been going great. Um, never, never like failing on any tests. Uh, That's good. Well in, in, that like, might class, change. Whatever. It changed for me. And with, yep. No, but but don't and, don't expect that though. <laughs> it, it I, know, I, I know, I know, I <laughs> know. And uh, Mr. Bagel, great, great teacher. Uh, by the elementary school hallway, I go there when I, uh, I'm an assistant in third grade. I go by his office every single day, and you know. Great guy. And then somebody tell us what school do you guys go to? Seidner Academy. Academy. Merle Seidner Gifted Academy. And rate your school experience out of 10. What are we feeling? 10. Oh, I give it maybe an 8. Seven. 10, 8, 7. Three. 11. Three. Three. Wow. Oh. All right, squeeze in real quick. We'll go to Cam 2 here. Right. So, do any of you know basketball? All right, that's okay. We're going to ask you anyway for the pick em segment here. First game is Heat at Celtics. We'll start with me and Jace, then we'll go to you for. I'm thinking, well, the Celtics, which is probably who you guys should pick. Celtics are really good. They're playing uh, the Heat in this one. Boston's, yeah, Boston's the pick. Yeah, we've, we've talked it over. I 100% agree. If you guys want to get this right, I'd pick Boston. <laughs> I mean, Boston's the best team in all of basketball. Okay, so. maybe what are you thinking? Nima. Yeah, Celtics. 
Celtics. Habiba. Uh, yeah, Celtics. Celtics and one. I like Leprechaun Celtics. There we go. Please We're unanimous see. for like the first time ever on last call. Boston will win this next game against the Heat. And then the second pick, this one, is really a coin flip. If you don't know basketball, pick whatever logo is cooler. I don't know. But you have the Pelicans. They're going to Oklahoma City to play the Thunder. Oklahoma City is a loud place to play. It's hard to play when you're on the road, especially in the playoffs. Um, this will be game two. We'll start with Juan this time. Who do you think is going to win? Uh, I think just by the, the logo, the, the New Orleans Pelicans okay. look, more, yeah. look more like – like stoic, they they look like they're gonna, you know, they're gonna pull havoc. it out. Yeah, they're yeah. gonna wreck havoc. Yeah, they're gonna lay it down. I say maybe Oklahoma has like the home ground advantage, yeah, home team go. advantage. Yeah. Probably, maybe they'll win. And possibly uh, the MVP as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll agree with Booby with the Oklahoma because they're home, you know. So it's Oklahoma smart. City Thunder. Yeah, I'm gonna have to say Oklahoma because this is their home. They know know what they're doing. This is their home, and they know what they're doing. Hey, I'm going with the Oklahoma City Thunder. That's the one seed, I mean, Shane Gilligas Alexander. Home teams are 12 and two in the playoffs right now, so it's a popular pick. But you know what? I like upsets sometimes. Give me the Pelicans. I mean, they made Game One close, but it was a two-point loss. Game Two was good, close as well. And give me the Orleans to see this one out this time. And just in case you guys uh, had any questions on who's doing what, how they're doing in this pick'em series, well, I'm about uh, 24 and 16, and oh. the NBA primetime picks champions. Okay. We even have a belt for it. Oh. Yeah. It's not too bad. Not too bad. All four of you could have one of those. Be like me one day. We don't want to be <laughs> Mr. Jace Hodge in this situation. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. We have a blast. Uh, thank you guys mm -hmm. for coming on today. You guys did thank great. You. How do you feel on camera? Feel great. Great? great. Yeah. It's good? This is what I thought it would be. Would this be something that you guys would ever want to do? Yeah. Sure. Okay, cool. Well, that's going to wrap up this real season finale this time, or at least you would think so. Uh, Who knows? Last call. Caden and Jace and a couple of eighth graders, too, made it a great, great show. Thank you for your time. We'll be back next year on Last Call.